In this video, I'll be building a robot using minimal effort by utilizing the conversational AI bot, ChatGPT. I'll give it simple prompts and follow its instructions to try creating an autonomous, line-following robot without doing any software programming, electronic circuit design, or even CAD modeling. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Before we get too carried away blindly building robots for an artificial intelligence, I want to start with something a little simpler. Let's see if ChatGPT can teach me how to blink an LED on and off using an Arduino. I'll start off by asking what components I need. Not only does it provide information I explicitly asked for, but it also inferred that I may want instructions. Okay, let, let's, let's put these to the test. Step 1. Connect the positive leg of the LED, the longer leg, to a digital output pin on the Arduino. Step 2. Connect the negative leg of the LED, the shorter leg, to a resistor. Step 3. Connect the other end of the resistor to ground on the Arduino. Step 4. Use the Arduino software to write a sketch that will turn the LED on and off at the desired frequency. Wait, but how do I actually program an Arduino? I have everything wired up. Can you write the program for me? Brilliant. Not only does it provide code, it also provides details on the uploading procedure. Let's give it a shot. Copy the sketch into the Arduino IDE and click Upload. It works! Okay, let's take off the training wheels. Do you think you could tell me the steps to building a line-following robot using Arduino? Wow, this is amazing. It's literally giving every step that I need. This honestly looks pretty robust. Let me go grab the components that are listed here. Okay, so I have most of the components here with me, but I want to see if I can substitute in the L298N motor driver instead of using the recommended L293D motor driver. I also want to see if it'll allow me to use a set of AA batteries as opposed to a 9 volt battery. Let's see what it says. At first pass, this looks like a brilliant answer. It signs off on my requested substitutes, but this is also where ChatGPT slips up for the first time. These statements about needing an external voltage regulator like a 7805 are actually false. Since the L298N motor driver already has a 5 volt regulator on board. In fact, the 5 volt regulator on the board is literally the 7805 it recommended we add externally. It's asking for the exact component that's already on the motor driver. Rah! <laughs> I would say that this is the biggest downfall of ChatGPT. When it's wrong about something, it is confidently wrong. Let's see what happens when I challenge that response. Thanks for the info, although I think the L298N already has a 5 volt regulator on the board. Okay, this looks better. I'll wire it up following the chatbot's recommendations. Positive battery terminal to input VCC, negative battery terminal to ground, and then the 5 volt pin from the L298N to the V-in pin on the Arduino. Wait a minute, this is another mistake. The V-in pin on the Arduino that we're told to connect 5 volts to only has a recommended range of 7 volts to 12 volts. Instead, we really want to connect to 5 volts directly. So this is another place that ChatGPT has spoken incorrectly with confidence. But for the moment, I'm going to just brush it aside. Let's go ahead and finally connect ground to ground. We now need to connect the motors. Again, the bot gives information that could work, but definitely isn't the proper procedure. This method would only allow the motor to spin in one direction, instead of both directions. This time I'm not going to brush it under the rug. No, ChatGPT, that is wrong! I have to admit, it's pretty neat how you can have a conversation with the bot similar to a human interaction, and if you disagree on something, you can rationalize your argument by presenting facts in a logical manner. However, this only works if you have pre-existing knowledge in the field. To use ChatGPT effectively, you'll need to act as a curator, researching and validating information from third-party sources. I'm going to skim over the next few questions for the sake of brevity, 
But if you want to go through the entire chat log, check out the link in the description below. Basically, I'm just asking it about wiring a second motor and which pins on the Arduino I should connect to. I then go on to ask about connecting the infrared sensor array. Here's the final wiring of the robot. It looks good, but it's lacking a bit of form. ChatGPT mentioned earlier in our conversation that I need a robot chassis. Maybe it can help design and build one? My local makerspace has a laser cutter, so let's design an SVG file for laser cutting. I'll start with a simple test by asking for an SVG file of a 25mm square. ChatGPT gives me a set of instructions to create the file for myself in Inkscape. While these steps do sound good, I'm lazy. I want you to do it for me, ChatGPT. Can you write the SVG file for me? Not only does it write the file, it remembers the laser cutter context from the conversation and tells me to save it with a .svg extension in a notepad editor. And then it tells me that I can import the file into the laser cutter's software. Absolutely brilliant. But let's now do something more useful. I want to create footprint files for each of these components. The motor drivers are 43mm square with 3mm mounting holes. Here, I'm giving the chatbot the dimensions and requesting it return an SVG file. Opening it up, and sure enough, it matches the motor driver. I'm not going to bore you to death. This part that I'm skipping over quickly is me just asking it to create footprints for the rest of the components, and these are the resulting SVG files. Now with all the individual components drawn, let's create a new file for the chassis itself, measuring 220 by 150 millimeters, and import the footprint files. Another annoying limitation of ChatGPT is that it truncates answers beyond a certain length. Fortunately, I can ask it to just continue from the last line. Copying this answer again and opening it up, I guess you could say it kind of worked. It imported all the footprints and ensured there were no overlaps between any of the components. However, their placement wasn't exactly conducive to efficient robot locomotion. I'm sure I could go back and forth with the bot and move everything into place, but I ultimately decided it was more efficient just for me to manually edit the files myself. And here's the final design after everything was shuffled around. Throwing the file on the laser cutter, this is what came out. Now, this isn't actually the first time I've built a line following robot. I actually teach an intro to robotics class here in Vancouver, BC using this exact robot. And as a side tangent, if you are based in Vancouver and would like to learn intro robotics from a real person and not an AI chatbot, then consider checking out some of my classes that include robot kits like this one. Link in bio. But based on this experience, I also know that I need some 3D printed brackets to mount the wheel and infrared sensor on. I initially tried recreating these components as STL files using ChatGPT, but honestly, it was a hair-pulling frustrating activity. I couldn't even build a simple cube with closed faces. I'm sure you could wrestle the chatbot into submission and get primitive STL files, but I ultimately decided to cheat and just use the existing mounting brackets that I already had. Please forgive me. This still counts as a mostly AI-generated robot, right? And with this, everything was assembled together. We're ready to program this robot and bring it to life using code generated by an artificial intelligence. But before getting to that, we have a segment from this video's sponsor, PCB Way. But this time, I'm gonna get ChatGPT to help me out. Write an ad read for a 30 second sponsored segment from PCB Way in a YouTube video. Bring your ideas to life with PCB Way. PCB Way is the go to destination for fast turnaround times, affordable prices, and high quality PCBs. Whether you're a maker, hobbyist, or engineer, their PCBs are designed to meet your needs. With a strong reputation for providing excellent customer service, PCB Way is the perfect choice. So why wait? Visit PCB Way today and get started on your next big project. It's absolutely insane what this chatbot can do. I will quickly add that if you've never built a PCB before and want to learn how to do that, I have an entire series on my channel, so check that out if you want. But for now, let's move on to the software, and this is the part that I was most worried about. But my fears were misplaced, because check this out. Based on the electronics and the pin allocations we discussed earlier, please write an Arduino program with five functions. Drive forward, reverse, left, right, and stop. Include a variable for storing the PWM drive speed. This program should loop through the five different drive functions with a two second delay between each. In just several seconds, the chatbot has given me a program to test out the robot's drivetrain functionality. 
As requested, it has five functions for each of the directions and has a variable called drive underscore speed for the PWM speed control. Testing it out, and it's perfect. Okay, let's go for it. The full robot program. Let's get it to add in the infrared sensor input and write an algorithm to follow a black line over a white surface. We want to use the sensors to detect when the robot drives off course by crossing over the line and then correct steering to get back on the line. Let's give these instructions to ChatGPT and see what it generates. Okay, so we have the full program, and I see we have some conditional logic functions in here. But will it work? Perfect! Oh, it works so well. I'm so happy. <laughs> the robot detects the line and then steers to stay right on top of it. Honestly, I don't even know why Tesla's having such a hard time creating full self-driving mode. They should just give ChatGPT the code base. <laughs> So, I do concede that this robot wasn't technically built by AI. I had to definitely lead a helping hand and redirect it when it was left astray. But, it was still wildly impressive what we were able to achieve. Stay tuned for more projects, I'll see you in the next one.